Good morning, boys and girls. Are you ready for our Bible time again? I'm ready to, to teach you a good lesson. And but first, we need to go ahead and start with the pledge to the American flag. Would you please stand with me? All right, boys and girls, take your right hand. Put it over your heart. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side let freedom ring. I hope you say it with me, boys and girls. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and ask the Lord to help us with today's Bible lesson, okay? Lord, thank you so much for this new day and for this new week. Lord, I pray that you would continue to keep my boys and girls healthy and their mommies and daddies and sisters and brothers and grandmas and grandpas as well. Lord, I pray that, that you would help them to listen to the Bible lesson and to do their very best of their schoolwork and help their mamas and daddies at home. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, I know this has been a little different doing our schoolwork at home instead of being here in class with me. But you know what? We're going to get through this together. And I know that you're going to just do very well, your very best finishing up this kindergarten school year. Well, let me go ahead and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to move this just a little bit and sit down and we will start our Bible lesson. All right. Are you ready, boys and girls? Well, I thought it would be kind of fun to uh, sing one of the songs that we've sung before. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you remember it? I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're going to sing that in just a minute. But I think we better start our welcome song first. What do you think? Shall we? Will you sing it with me, please? Welcome to school. It's a wonderful day for working and learning and sharing at play. Bible and reading are written. Magic too, and making new friends all are fun to do. Good job, boys and girls. Now, let's go ahead and sing I Am the Way, the Truth, and the Life. The sign language. And girls, who is the way, the truth, and the life? Who are we talking about? You are right, Jesus. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And when we learned that, remember, I think it was in January, we learned those verses. We also learned that Thomas said, Lord, 
we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Very good, boys and girls. Well, we have a new a new uh, Bible verse for this week. And I'm going to teach it to you with a song. We're going to go ahead and play it first. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. All right? And I want you to listen to it. I'm going to play it twice the first time. Um, you can just listen. The second time, if you want to kind of hum a little bit with it. And then the third time, if you think you know the words, you can try them. All right? Ready? Here we go. Try to sing the words if you think you can. And that was found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. We're going to learn this month of, well, actually next month, the month of April. This is the last day of March, March 31st. And we're going to learn um, in April the whole armor of God. We're going to start with this first verse that says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the tricks. Wiles just simply means tricks, or we could even say lies of the devil. Because the Bible says that, the devil, this is a sign for devil, the devil is the father of all lies. He's a liar, and everything he says is lies, but you know what he does? He tries to trick people into listening to him. He tries to trick people into sinning, all right? That's exactly what he wants us to do. He doesn't want us to live right. He wants us to live, what's this, boys and girls? That's right wrong. We don't want to listen to him. So we're going to learn about putting on God's whole armor. And that's a good thing to pray. Lord, help me to put on your armor every single day. And we're going to talk this month, or the next month of, month of April, we're going to talk about every piece of the armor. In fact, at home, I'm going to even have you make one of those uh, pieces, which is the shield. And we'll talk about that later on. All right. Well, in Bible time, we have been learning about the new, um, the new uh, say leader, uh, the person that God chose to take Moses' place to bring the people into the promised land that God had promised to give them. Can you remember what his name is? I want to take a minute and just review, and then we'll have our new lesson. Can you remember what his name is? Here he is. There's Moses right here. There's Moses and Aaron. And God said, I want you to take Joshua, and I want you to let him be the new leader of my people. Well, let's find out from God's word. I'm going to do a little bit of review, but let's open it up and find out exactly what God says, shall we? And we'll do the Ten Commandments at the end today, because I'm hoping that you've already got them all learned. But let's open our Bible, Betty. We open our Bible so carefully. It's a special book, you see. It tells us of God. And his love for, for me, all oh, boys and girls, I hope you're going to sit and listen so quietly because we've got a very, very good lesson today. And it kind of goes along with our new Bible verse about putting on God's armor so that we won't be tricked by the wiles or the lies of the devil. And so it, that's a really good Bible verse for today's lesson. But let's go a little bit further and see what you've learned so far. Boys and girls, what did you think Josh was doing right here? He's praying. He's asking God for direction. God, how do I lead your people? I need your help. 
And we're going to find out that every time Joshua prayed, why? Things went well. He prayed because it was time to go into the promised land. The Lord says, <clears throat> we're going to tell him how to do it. And so he sent, first of all, two people to check out the city of Jericho, two men. And, and there was a lady that helped. Do you remember what her name was? Sorry, Rahab. Rahab. Rahab helped him because Rahab told him, oh, we've heard all that God has done for you and your people. Oh, we've heard all about it. We're scared. And then she said, please, please, would you save my family alive? And they said, well, if you don't tell that we've came in, you don't tell what we're going to do. We will save your people. And so she had to take that red thread and bind it in the rope that she let those uh, spies down in. Well, it was, they were now in the promised land, and the first city that they came to was the city of Jericho. And the city of Jericho had very big walls. Well, Joshua needed to know what to do. So what did he do? He prayed again, remember? Every time he prayed, things went well. He prayed, and the Lord Jesus came to him. And first of all, Joshua was scared, and he said, Are you for us? Are you for our enemy? He said, I'm captain of the... Uh, of the Lord's host, I'm captain of all God's host, which is the angels. Well, who was that voice in the air? It was Jesus. And Jesus told Joshua exactly what to do. It was kind of a strange plan. Was Joshua going to obey him? Do you remember what God told Joshua to do? How they were going to win the battle of Jericho? That's right. There were supposed to be these men with... Uh, the priests were supposed to have trumpets, and they were to blow the trumpets, and four of the priests were to carry the Ark of the Covenant. The soldiers were supposed to go behind them, and they were supposed to go all the way around the big city of Jericho for seven days. The first six days, how many times were they supposed to go around? That's right, just six times. Boys and girls are so smart. You must have been listening to the Bible lesson. They were, that's right, one time. Were the people supposed to make any noise? Oh, no. They were to be quiet. Just like when we have, a, remember our, our um, when your clip of your color table is on the red, that means no talking, no talking during seat work because Miss Comstock was doing reading groups and Miss Callum was busy getting the kids on the, uh, some of the kids on the computer doing IXL on the computer. Well, they were not to do any talking. One. Two, three, four, five, six days. Just walk around one time quietly. And all the people in Jericho, they saw them and they were scared to death. But on the seventh day, oh, the seventh day was different, wasn't it? How many times were they supposed to go around the city the seventh day? That's right, seven times. And for the first six times, one, two, three, four, Five, six, the first six times, not making any noise, just the trumpets were blowing and the people were walking. But on the seventh time, Joshua says, when you hear me shout, I want you to shout. And that's exactly what they did. And when they shouted, God had all the walls of the city fall down. The trumpets blew, the people shouted, the walls fell down. And they went in and were able to capture and win that city. And only Rahab, only Rahab and her family were left alive. Now I want you to remember something that I told you about this land. This land of Israel, God waited 400 years. 400 years before he let the people of Israel go in and take that land. He waited for the people of the land, the Amorites, the Hittites, um, the Canaanites, all of the people of the land, he waited until their iniquity, which means sin, was full. It was full. <clears throat> the Bible says the cup <clears throat> of their iniquity, <clears throat> excuse me, was full. In other words, everything they did was wicked. Everything they did was sin. And they were teaching their children to sin. And God said, enough. Now he let Israel, his chosen people, go in and take the land. God said, I will give you the land. You just have to go in and take it. I'm going to give it to you. God waited for the people to repent, to be sorry for their sin and turn to God. But they refused to. 
They worship false gods. And God said, I want you to destroy them all because if you don't, they will get you to do evil and do wicked and serve their false gods. God says, because they're only wicked, the only way that children would go to heaven is if they died when they were little. And so God said, go in and take the land. I will give it to you because the wickedness was so wrong, so bad. Well, that's what they did. And God said, gave them one more instruction. He said, do not take anything of the accursed thing. All the things that they had offered to their false gods, their idols, which was commandment number two. They were not to do that. God said, do not take any of that. But there was one man, one man that did not obey God. One man looked at what was there. The Bible says he saw a Babylonianish garment. He saw it. He saw the gold that was there. And he saw the silver that was there. And the Bible says he saw it. He coveted it. Remember covet? That was commandment number what? And thou shalt not covet. He coveted. Now, did he already have the Ten Commandments? Yes. Because remember, God gave it to Moses. And Moses wrote it all down. And he wrote down the first five books of the Bible that God had given Moses. He knew that commandment number 10 says, Thou shalt not covet. Be content with what you have. But he saw it. The Bible says he coveted it. And he took it. Now remember, I told you, every time Joshua prayed and asked God what to do, God helped him. But now here they had captured that city. Now it was time to go to the next place and get that that God said he would give them. Boys and girls, Joshua didn't pray this time. He didn't pray. He simply Sent some spies in to check it out. They came back and they said, oh, it's just a little city. It's not big like Jericho. Why? Don't let all the soldiers go. Yeah, only two or three thousand. That'll be enough. And so Joshua sent three thousand men to capture the city of Ai. But they didn't win that day. No. In fact, 36 Israelites were killed. And Josh, Joshua was so upset, he said, what? Oh, why did you do this? He rent his clothes. He fell down on his face. Why? Oh, the people of the land are going to hear what happened and, and we'll all be destroyed. Why did you? Why did we should have stayed back there on the other side of Jordan? And God said, Joshua, get up. Get up. Just sit in the camp. And... It's, remember, there's Joshua. He was so upset. He called out. God told him what to do. He called out the families, first the tribe of Judah, and then the family, and then Achan. And Joshua said to Achan, give God the glory. What did you do? And he told him, I saw, I covered it. 36 men died. But you know what? If Joshua had prayed first, would that have happened? Probably not. No, nope, probably not. Well, here they are in the promised land. Something happened again where Joshua didn't pray. The people of the land, the inhabitants of the land from Gibeon, they heard all of the things that God did for Israelites. They lived close to where they were. And they said, oh, we better do something. Because if we don't, they're going to kill us too. And so they put on old ripped clothes, dirty ripped clothes. They got the thinnest donkeys that they could find. They got moldy bread. And their their uh, wine skins where they carried something to drink was all old. And, and they just, they came in all, uh, the beards and all, they were just messy. And they said, oh, we we... We live a long ways away. We live in a far country away. Please make peace with us. Why? We live far away. Well, some of the people of Israel looked at him and said, well, how do we know that you don't live close by? 
How do we know? Maybe maybe you live right nearby us. Oh, no, 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 no. We live far away. Boys and girls, they lied. They told a lie. They said they lived far away, but they didn't. They lived close. They said, please make peace with us. Oh, just make peace with us. We live far, far, far away. Please, please, we'll, we'll just be your servants. But we live far away. Make peace treaty with us. And Joshua didn't pray. And the Bible says in, in Joshua chapter 9 that Joshua looked at these men and he, the Bible says in verse 14, ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. He didn't pray. He didn't ask God what to do. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them. That's like a covenant, an agreement. Okay, A league means a, a covenant agreement to let them live. Joshua made a peace treaty with them. Said, okay, we're going to let you live. He didn't pray first. Three days later, boys and girls, they found out that the Gibeonites, they didn't live far away, that it was a lie. They lived close. But they made an agreement with them that they would let them live. And so Joshua went to them and said, what have you done? You lied to us. Well, we heard what what you did to all the people around. We didn't want you to kill us. And that's why we did it. And so Joshua said, okay, your people will be uh, hewers of wood. You'll have to cut down the wood that we need for our fires and carry our water. You will be our servants. And the Gibeonites says, well, that's better than dying. And so the Gibeonites were allowed to live. And boys and girls, it's Joshua. Joshua had just put on his armor. If Joshua had just prayed and asked God for help, it wouldn't have happened. Remember our, our new memory verse? With on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Joshua was tricked by the lies of the devil. Because he didn't have on God's armor. God's armor is, is we have the belt of truth, the breastplate of God's righteousness, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We're going to learn about that in the month of April, boys and girls. You're going to learn about all those pieces. We're going to have a lesson of each one. But oh, if they had simply listened, if they had simply prayed to God and got direction from God, that wouldn't have happened. And boys and girls, we need to do that too. So let's right now, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's ask God to help us pray and get, get our advice, direction from God, <clears throat> excuse me, every day. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for our new Bible verse, putting on the whole armor of God. So that we're not fooled by the lies, the wiles, the tricks of the devil. <clears throat> Lord, help the boys and girls to listen and to obey your word every day by obeying the mommy and daddy at home. And Lord, just taking time to listen to God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, hope you did a good job listening today to the Bible lesson. And we want to thank you for it. And Lord, and we want to. I'll talk to you again tomorrow, but oh, a little bit later, you'll get to hear a story time from me again. Bye-bye now, boys and girls.